Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today I have a very special guest with me. This is Skinny Medic. You guys are probably familiar with a lot of his videos. He does a lot of stuff on medical preparedness, prepping, things like that. Basically just the lifestyle of being prepared medically is what Skinny Medic is all about. And I would definitely encourage all of you guys to subscribe to his channel, go over there and check him out. Uh, today we are going to be discussing blowout kits. All right. Why they're important why you should have one. Uh, so, so Skinny Medic, tell me, uh, yeah, with all the stuff that's going on, you got active shooter situations, you got situations like Hemp and uh, down in Orlando there where, you know, obviously everyone can be a first responder. Absolutely. And right? that's what we kind of, you know, years ago we thought about this trauma, this trauma training only being for the gun range, things like that. But now the violence and the trauma is coming to your office, it's coming to your <clears throat> school, it's coming to your neighborhoods. So you've got to be a little more prepared than you were several years ago. Yeah. Well, you know, I've always kind of, you know, told people myself that you should be prepared that life is kind of a giant training exercise. That's how you have to look at it. Life has its times where it's going to throw you a curveball. You don't know if it's just going to be falling off your bike and spraining your ankle or one of your kids falling down and getting a pretty nasty wound somewhere in the middle of nowhere and you got to be able to, to be that first responder, to be the person that can control the situation and take care of them and get them to greater help if it's needed. Now usually like in life we just you know, run into like the hmm. average little cuts and scrapes right. and little bumps and bruises which many of us are usually prepared for pretty well. But what exactly does a blowout kit actually consist of? Like what what is the purpose of a blowout kit? So there's difference between like a regular first aid kit that you would have in your car, you know, you see like at Walmart things like that, than a blowout kit. A blowout kit is designed for down and dirty nasty trauma. That's all it there is for. It's not to do the band-aids or the little small things. It's there for, oh my gosh, that's a lot of blood, or there's a lot of holes in this dude or chick. So you got to fix them, and that's what the blowout kit's there for to fix. Sure. You know, and, and the thing is, bl blowout kit, you're talking serious bleeding. You're talking the kind of bleeding that oftentimes hand pressure alone can't stop, something that might require the use of a tourniquet or anything like that. So we actually have a bunch of blowout kits right here on the table from various manufacturers. Uh, we'll kind of go down the line a little bit, but we'll start out with probably the most basic type that people are going to run into. This is actually just a USGI blowout kit. Uh, this is their new and improved version. I say new and improved because this one's almost 10 years old. But these are affordable though. I mean, you can find these surplus and yep. you can find them. So basically you've got a pouch and it's on retention device. So obviously the idea is that you leave the pouch on your uh, load bearing vest or whatever you're going to have and this can go wherever it needs to go and stay with the soldier. So the whole idea of having an individual blowout kit is so that you are not a liability to someone else. Uh, on the battlefield, a soldier needs to be self-sufficient. The whole idea is that your kit gets used on you. If, you're, exactly. if you're injured, your medical uh, you know, assets are used to help you and no one else. And that way you're not using someone else's resources. Because I'm not going to use my tourniquet, my tourniquet to save your life. I'm going to use your yeah. tourniquet. Yeah, the yeah. tourniquet on the victim. So, yeah. you know, you've got a tourniquet here now we talked earlier about this this is an early cat uh, tourniquet this is one of the first gym ones it is and so <clears> but you notice like it has a tourniquet that's easier to get access to everything else so having right. that tourniquet quick access to get to you very quickly is something that's important because you can get you know things to other things got some time but if your arm if your artery and your arms bleeding it's gonna be squirting bright red blood out your femoral artery gets hit it's squirting bright red blood everywhere and you can completely bleed out within about three minutes if you're from oral artery. So that doesn't count by the time you get lose consciousness, things like that. So yeah. you've got to get this tourniquet on very, very quickly. And the CAT is a combat proven tourniquet, and it's a good tourniquet. So Ranger designed that one. Yes, yes. North American Rescue, uh, the guy who started that, so our, and he designed this. You know, it's a one handed application. That was one of the things that they found were lacking, was getting this on your arm and getting it to apply it, you know, by yourself with just one arm. So pull this down. It's set up for a leg right now. So we yep. pull it down. Let me set up. So this one's set up for a leg because it needs a little more grip here. But sure. you know, that one-hand application is important. Absolutely. And we talked earlier about staging up the actual items as well. Like this tourniquet was staged up for a leg. You might could even go the extra mile and have one tourniquet staged up already for an arm, your arm precisely, which would be the purpose of having an individual blowout kit. Have one set up for the leg, one set up for the arm, and that way whatever happens, you're, you're that much closer to being ready if, you know, because seconds count. Yeah, and usually the one I have on my, my keeping my battle belt is, you know, quick access. I do set up for my arm, 
That way I can just get it on there. And if I had to, I could put it on a leg, but it's easier to have it set up for an arm stage that way. Now, generally the way the military handles tourniquets, and I, I know that we're talking in a few different terms here because you know what he does for a living, he deals with the public and in peacetime. All of the medical training that I've had, you know, I'm an infantry guy, former infantry guy. All the training I've had has been pretty much blowout type stuff because if you're in a combat situation, chances are a guy's got a shrapnel wound or he's shot or something like that. The way tourniquets are handled is the victim that goes, uh, that's being airlifted out or whatever, he would generally have a T written on his forehead with the time that the tourniquet was applied because let's say that there's some bad bleeding on a limb or something like that, but say the limb isn't like chopped off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, the limb's still there. That limb still needs blood flow to survive or else, guess what? It's going to have to be chopped off or removed. And the reason you put the time on there is because, yeah, you've stopped the bleeding, but that limb is at the cost of being lost if the ble if, if blood flow is not restored to right. that limb. And you're building you up might toxins and all kinds of things in your arm right now. So you still have a few hours, usually about three to five hours is what the kind of time frame we're looking at right now yeah. to get them to definitive health care right now. So other than tourniquets and these blowout kits, I mean, this is a military one, but you see we've got, like, what all we have here, you know? So when you're looking at dolls. buying a blowout kit, I mean, because this is our expensive. I mean, you gotta, you're going to spend some money there. You need to think about, it's got to create a certain category. And we use the March algorithm when I'm talking to people about trauma kits. And that's uh, massive bleeding. You've got airway, respiratory, circulation, and heat loss. So it really should be able to maintain all of those. So you kind of think of, like, control major bleeding, airway and respiratory. So this one here does that. You know, you have your MPA, your nose hose. It goes up into your nose to protect someone's airway who can't protect them. They're unconscious or kind of semi-conscious. You've got gloves to protect you from whatever the bad germs are. You can also use this on a chest. You know, if someone's got a hole in their chest, you can use a gloved hand to start with that sucking chest wound. Mm -hmm. A good Israeli bandage, pressure bandage, is fantastic because you can use this as a tourniquet as well. You know, if someone's got big old fat legs, one tourniquet may not stop the blood flow. But if you've got an Israeli bandage or a pressure bandage of some sort, then you can use it as a uh, tourniquet, secondary tourniquet. Nice. And then some H&H &H gauze is fantastic. Now, this isn't hemostatic agent. That hemostatic, like combat gauze or Celox, is expensive, but this will work just fine. And we normally use this for like in the shoulders, the pelvis, things like that, that we can't get a tourniquet on. We'll stuff it down into the wound. You put your pressure bandage over top of it, and you're good to go. And this does have a roll of tape, which is always useful, you know, for different types of medical reasons. So this is, for the money, this is not a bad, a bad kit here. Or you can uh, just join the military and get one for free if you want, you know. You can always do that too. <laughs> this one, the Uncle Sam gave me this one. <laughs> this one was free. Now, talking about blowout kits that are commercially available, let's start talking about those a little bit. So, um, we've got a couple of different ones on the table here. I've got one from Spartan Armor Systems. I'm going to go ahead and have you uh, crack that one open. Okay. And just give us kind of an assessment on what you think. Because the thing is, a lot of people generally, when they, when they talk about blowout kits, a lot of folks want to be prepared in some way, shape, or fashion, but they don't know how, or, or they may not even be familiar with how to use the contents of the blowout kit. So that's probably important too, is Definitely. like knowing you need to know how to how to take it out there and use it in a hurry. Definitely. I, I say it in my, in my videos, you never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember, you need the right gear and the right training. Yeah, yeah. So having the right gear and the right training are super important. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can have all this laying on the table, but if you've never put a CAD on or SWAT T, things like that, then the time's under stress, you're not going to be able to do it. Sure. So this one here, we did put the uh, identifier on it, that we know this is a med kit. And that's important too, because not, we got this pouch laying here, this pouch laying here, this pouch, we don't know what these are. Sure. So having that identifier is important. So we can open this up and make sure there's nothing, yeah. And guys, we, we've just, we've got these kits from all these different people. We're just gonna have a look at them and just kind of get an assessment there. So this, I noticed this one doesn't really have like one of the Ranger type of tourniquets. Right. It's so, got like a compressible tourniquet. Yeah, this is the SWAT T tourniquet. It, it's a good tourniquet. It's not bad. It's where its limitations are is for one-handed application. Trying to get this wrapped on your arm by yourself, it's limited. It's not a bad tourniquet, but trying to put it on your arm yourself, it can be difficult because it's made out of rubber. So when it starts getting bloody, things like that, it gets kind of slippery. Slippery, hard to do. with. But if with. I was putting this on you, no problem. So it's a little bit difficult. That's where it's going to be limited, but it's not a bad tourniquet. So then we come in here, uh, got some compressed bandages there for the galls as well. That's a good thing to have in there. Let's see. Then we have Fox chest seal, which is good. And then you got the hemostatic agent, Celox. There again, this is going to be 
a little bit better than this because now this has the hemostatic agent in there, which is gonna basically take the water out of the blood, if that makes sense. It makes it thicker for like, you know, it's a big terminology there, but that's basically what it does. It just takes the water, makes the blood thicker. Helps does it with, make the blood coagulate? Yeah. Is that basically we, what we, it? Yeah, it takes the red blood cells, they start hooking together and, um, and uh, the platelets hook together and you get the clotting process to help. So, you know, this here is a powder, so you can kind of pour it in and then you can put the galls in there and pack it. Okay. The other good thing about this tourniquet here is it can be used as a compression gauze too. So you don't necessarily have to have a tourniquet, you know. Double duty. Double duty. So then you got the fox chest seal here. This is going to be for penetrating trauma up from the, from the neck down to the belly button. So it's got that, which is good. You've got a pressure bandage there. Olay's pr pressure bandage, which is good. They're, the wider the pressure bandage is, the actually the easier it is to apply and to cut off blood flow. So that, that's a nice addition there. And you've got some small roll of tape. Probably a little thin for medical probably purpose. Probably a little thin. I'd probably go with a little bit thicker tape than that. Yeah. And then a pair of gloves, which these are the nitrile gloves. So they're non-latex. You don't have to worry about latex allergies, things like that. So nice. it's very good to have a, a good pair of gloves on you. So the only thing I would say, if I had to say anything, is this probably just get a little better. But yeah. everything else is fantastic. I'd probably just get a little better tape. So. Okay, cool. That's a fair assessment, I believe. Yeah, I think and so. that's a fox. No, that's a condor pouch. Yep. And so then it's also got the scissors because you build, find these wounds, you got to expose them and cut them, and then you've got some H and H skull. So a good kit overall. Okay, cool. Not bad. All right, so we're going to go down the line. We're just kind of going through and checking these out a little bit. And I think it's important to like pull the stuff out of these things and show you guys what it's all about. And you'll be seeing some some shots closer up of what we're looking at here. This one is from AR five hundred Armor. So this one you're going to notice has a different tourniquet here. This is the soft T tourniquet. They're again similar to the cat tourniquet. These are both used in our military right now. They're deployed overseas right now, mm -hmm. and they're using them. They've been combat proven. They're life saving. And this is a good tourniquet, good quality tourniquet. It's a good stuff. It just takes training to know how to use it and be prepared to sure. use it. And you got to think, got to think on your feet when it comes to medical uh, situations. You got to be quick. Yep. So then, same thing. We got the H and H galls here, and then gloves. Another. It's kind of, it's kind of a thin yep. roll of tape there. Probably want something a little thicker. So than you got the SWAT T tourniquet again. Pressure bandage. Now this one does mix it up and go with the hyphen chest seals. So you have a dual pack here, which is good because especially with high energy trauma, it goes in and goes out. So having that ability to put a chest seal on the front and your lungs are on the back side as well. So you can move and log roll your patient. Entry and exit. Yep, entry and exit. And it reminds you there too. You've got an entry and exit one, so it kind of reminds you. So those are- That's smart. Smart. Get behind that. And then you have scissors, which is there again, good. Uh, compressed galls, yep, some more, more galls, which is sure. good. And then we have some more Celox hemostatic agent. So powder form. This is going to pour in. You hold pressure for several minutes. Sure. And this is going to get bleeding control. So you guys are probably familiar with a substance called Quick Clot. Uh, Quick Clot is basically just a brand for a hemostatic uh, rapid coagulant is basically what mm -hmm. we know it as. And the way he explained it makes a lot more sense than the way I would explain it. But rapid coagulants have their place, and uh, they certainly are, you know, very, very useful, especially for some really severe bleeding. You'd be able to say that better than I can. Um, but, you know, one thing about it, and, of course, when you're trying to survive, it doesn't matter, you get some wicked scars. Yeah. I mean, that, it, you scar really bad when you use coagulants, and uh, your, your patient's probably going to, not be happy because they don't feel good either. Right. You know, they, you, it, they burn. They burn. <laughs> but, the, but you're going to live. You and they're know? expensive too. I mean, just the retail. They, they are. They are. But the thing is, we're talking life and death. <laughs> Blowout kits involve life and death situation. If you bleed out, you're going to die, and then it won't matter if you're in pain or not. So, you know, be prepared for that, that if you do have rapid coagulants in your blowout kit, mm -hmm. uh, that if, if it's going to be used on you, and if you're carrying it to benefit you, if you're wounded or hurt, just bear in mind that it, it's going to hurt. Okay, that's just the bottom line. It, it's not going to feel good, but just keep it in your mind that you're going to survive and just have the survival mentality in your head, and, and you're going to be in good shape. Like the H&H &H calls, I mean, that's mainly designed to go inside the wound. you got to get to the source. So if you've got a hole right here, I'm sticking my finger down, and I'm going to find that artery that's pumping over. So that's not going to feel very comfortable. You not know, in, in terms of pain, let's just talk <laughs> about pain threshold with this kind of stuff, a traumatic wound. Do you find that a lot of patients just pass out anyway? 
I do, but you know the ones honestly like I've seen I've seen some really traumatic you know, amputations things like the leg, and they say the tourniquet hurts worse than the amputation. Like I've had several people tell me like your leg is gone. It. Yeah, like your leg is gone, and like there's like please take the tourniquet off. Please, I'm like no, like you're gonna bleed to death if I take it off. So it hurts. Like this stuff is probably not, pressure on yeah. that area too. You know, you got the pressure because you're from, collapsing the muscle around the artery. Yeah. That's why we're putting this tourniquet on because you've got the artery pumping through, yeah. and you're trying to collapse the muscle around it and to cut yeah. off blood flow. So that's what you're doing. So it hurts. Yeah, I mean, think about a muscle injury. I mean, think about when you just bruise yourself bad working out hard, or you get you get a bad bump and you get this painful bruise. Imagine that, but you're being squeezed like that and having to constrict those vessel, blood vessels to stop the bleeding. Uh, I can imagine that'd be a very traumatic experience as well as painful, but you know, this is a last case kind of scenario. So let's go over a couple of more things. We actually have an SOE fight light here we're gonna talk about in a minute, but yep. let's go over some of, uh, some of yours here, so. So this was our first kit we came out. This is what started Skinny Medic. And this is kind of more of a general first aid kit. It has some quick clot sponges and stuff like that in there. Um, you know, instead of having the gauze, this is a sponge. So it had some more like general first aid kit. This was my first kit that it started Skinny Medic. So mm -hmm. now we've kind of moved up and got into more of the trauma supplies. And so we've got several of my kits over here that we can go over if you want to. Yeah, and one thing when you opened that that I liked, what I saw there is that you've also got some cut and scrape, just minor stuff too. So yeah, we've you've got, got a, a kit that can also deal with just some very minor cuts and scrapes as well as traumas. Yep, and that's what we designed. This kit was, like I said, this is my first kit I designed a few years okay. back. And it was designed for someone who took a basic first aid class to kind sure. of know how to use. So That's smart. But then we saw the market and saw the need for more trauma kits. So we, we um, started doing that. So these two kits here, we part partnered with North American Rescue. Uh, they they packaged them up. I picked the supplies that were in them, kind of designed them around what I thought was a good need, and then they package them up, seal them up. And then why we wanted to do that was because there's so many fake cat tourniquets on the market that you know that this is getting from North American, so you know you're getting good quality stuff. Now that kit here is just designed to stop the bleeding. Like this is not. It's all it is, is it stop the bleeding. Bleeding control bleeding only. Bleeding control. You get a tourniquet, a pressure bandage, some gloves, and some gauze. We designed this to put in your BDU pocket, your backpack, your briefcase, your computer case, something like that. You can carry the office, school, because now that trauma, that violence is coming to you wherever you're at, not just at the gun range. So this is something to get you to a better trauma kit. You know, what I like about this little kit here, and both of these kits actually, is the fact that for a lot of people that are that are toting these around with them on a regular basis may not be medical people. They might not want to have an actual like blowout kit in a military style package right on their book bag looking you know, they don't want people getting the wrong idea. This right. is something that you can stuff in your backpack. And then if there's something bad going on and I want to empty out a boot bag or whatever, and this falls out on the ground, there's no way you're going to not know what that is. It's clear. It's packaged. There it is. You know that it's medical supplies. I like the fact that you can see what's in it. Mm -hmm. And the packaging also, what I like about it, is sanitary. If you're in a dusty environment, a dirty environment, everything like that, this is keeping the contents of this pouch uh, sanitary and free from dirt and germs or anything else that can cause uh, this stuff to be compromised. Yep. And then, you know, it, it's resealable. So if you open it up and say you have your own pouch and your own kit that you want to put it in, then you can reseal it and put it in whatever you want. So this kit here, this was my pocket kit. <clears throat> and then this is my essentials kit. I kind of looked at that March algorithm that we talked about, and I designed a kit de designated to that March algorithm. So it has the cat tourniquet, has a pressure bandage, it's got some uh, wound packing galls, compressed galls in it. It's got gloves, it has chest seals in it, it has a Mylar blanket. To, uh, once you patient goes into shock, you can cover them with a blanket. Nice. And it's got the Benchmade hook in there. So that's kind of a different spin on things. It's got the lifetime warranty. And lighter made. weight and everything yep. like that. Yep. Only thing on that Benchmade hook though, it won't cut through zippers. Like right, that's what, yeah. That's the only thing I found. Like it cuts through denim, cuts through things really nice. Yep. Um, it won't cut through AR500 soft body armor. I figured that out. So um, we <laughs> well, you know, cut it's it important, up. guys. Always make sure you carry multi tool. Honestly, if you can afford like just a good standard multi tool, it probably wouldn't. If you were going to seal something like this on your own, or even like. Even from his perspective, offering that as a product might not even bad, be a bad idea to seal like a really basic multi-tool in here too, because mm -hmm. you never know. You might need to whip it out and, and, and snap some, you know, if somebody's wearing something that you can cut off with like a, a pair of dikes on a multi-tool or even an actual pair of small dikes, probably wouldn't be an entirely bad idea just to be able to get the clothing away from the wound and, and treat the wound. Yep. 
And so this is my newest one that we just came out with. Uh, we're actually doing, as of right now, July 7th, we're doing pre-sales on this. Nice. So in about six weeks, we're going to have this out. This is a U.S.-made pouch. Uh, so it's military spec. It's good quality gear. So it's my design. And um, it's U.S.-made. So if people are wanting that, they're wanting the you know, Condor is not a bad quality. Oh, yeah. uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's Chinese-made. People are wanting American-made. So we came out with this one. And this one's mine that I carry. So this one we can open up. I have the gloves on the outside here. And we open the pouch up, and then a pair of scissors, cat tourniquet, Gen 7, 6 inch pressure bandage. This is Israeli bandage. And then I carry the two hyphen chest seals. These are vented chest seals. So, what happens with sometimes is you get pressure drop building up in the chest, whether it be air or blood. And so, if you've got a chest seal that doesn't vent on there, then all it's building up and things are getting pushed around inside the body, and that's bad for the body. So this will allow that stuff to vent. So that's why I, I chose to go with the vented here. And then in the pocket, we have some compressed gauze. This is a non-hemostatic, just some, some simple compressed gauze. And then I went with the combat gauze. I can get it out of here. So this is a hemostatic gauze that you would, you know, where the Celox was the powder over here. This is a gauze, so you can kind of push it down to the source of the bleeding. There again, it's gonna be painful, it's gonna hurt. Not be very nice, but it's gonna but you're gonna live. It's gonna save your life, and then and that's a quick clot product. Yep. You see. Yeah. And then MPA nose hose. So if somebody's not able to protect the airway. I can stick this down their nose real quick, and it's gonna hold the tongue off the back of the throat and protect the airway. Yeah. What 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 is that term? Let, let me guess. Hang on. It's it's a nasal pharyng pharyng pharyngeal Pharyng airway. Yep. That's <laughs> it. Yep. I, I always get those like terminologies mixed up. You know, the reason I qu keep mentioning quick clot is because. In the military, that's what that's the brand. When everybody thinks like a, a hemostatic, rapid coagulated, coagulating substance like that, they think quick clot because yep. that's, I believe, one of the, the common brands that the military it is. issues out in terms of their hemostatic agents. So quick clot, obviously, is not the only one that's out there. There are other companies that make yes. uh, all of these types of things. So that's interesting. Uh, this should give you a bit of an idea. We're going to finish up with this uh, Fight Like Carrier. This is an SOE. And uh, so here we're getting a little bit more into the combat oriented area of things, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, something that, uh, you know, this is actually one of my employees, John, this is his personal carrier and he wanted us to kind of do an assessment, a medical assessment of the medical capabilities of this carrier. Mm -hmm. SOE designed the fight like carrier for a guy who's going to get into a little bit of trouble, okay. all right? A little bit of trouble, but he needs to, to be able to move fast and get in and out. So he's got his magazine pouches here with his mags in it. All right, everything's good there. He's got an extra pistol mag. He's got a knife here. He's got his cat five. No, that's a that's a different one. Whoever yeah, makes that turn. That's a cat tourniquet. It's got it the is. white tab, so it's going to be a red tip. Should be. Yeah. Yep, so it's a red tip. So it's it's a newer generation. It's not the Gen Seven, but it's a newer generation. It's a good good cat tourniquet. All right. So he's got his he's got his cat cat tourniquet on the bottom there. This is easy access, quick access there again. We talked about get it to it quick, and you. Can, and I'm sure knowing him, it's probably staged up and everything, and and probably pre you know, pre-measured out to fit a certain limb or whatever. Yep. He's got an extra pistol mag in here. I don't think that's necessarily <laughs> medical related. Maybe that's if you're getting ready to die, you just use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But here, why don't you break that stuff out and tell us what you think. So, so this is one that he kind of put together just, you know. So he's got a little flush here. Um, you know, you could use, if you had some saline, things like that, you could use the flush wounds out, things like that. It's not very, very heavy, but it's probably one of those things you're going to use as a secondary injury prevention for an infection, things like that. So, a pair of hemostats, you can clamp things down with, hold things, because if your hands are bloody, these come in really nice handy, because some things are really small, you can't hold, or if you need to get in there and try to clamp, heaven forbid, a, a clamp an artery, that you could use it for that. So then, oops, oh, I threw something out. Let me got you. Looks like a pair of tweezers. So... He has this little cheap tourniquet. We're gonna have to make fun of him for that one. This is an IV tourniquet. Doesn't really do much, so we're gonna we're gonna make fun of him for this one. We'll we'll toss that one out for him. It's okay. He's got everything in a bag here to keep it from protected from the weather, things like that. And that's not a bad idea too. You know, to kind of keep it from the sure. dirt, grime. So we have some band aids. Always good to have. You know, I I have thousands of dollars worth of medical gear in my truck, and I always give out band aids. So it's a good sure. thing there. Duct tape, everybody likes duct tape. You know what? I didn't consider out of any of these blowout kits, 
how useful duct tape would be. You can make a lot of stuff, you can fix a lot of stuff with duct tape, even first aid related, you can do a lot with this. So then we have gloves, quick clot sponge, there again, is another good product to have. He's got the H&H &H calls. He has a four inch pressure bandage, and then the SWAT T tourniquet. Okay, so, so literally you had three tourniquets technically, I guess. Technically, yeah, but yeah, so we're gonna make fun of him for this one, but we'll, we'll, we'll take that one out for him, this one here. But yeah, so he could use, this is obviously as a, as a tourniquet. If he had to, he could use this as a tourniquet, and he's got his cat there, so. Good so job. really, one of one of the best ways to control bleeding is pressure. Yes. You know, keeping pressure on the on the bleeding, and when it comes to uh, this video, could be an hour and a half or two <laughs> hours long if we really wanted to go into all the ins and outs of evaluating a casualty, assigning priorities to you know how bad people are hurt and everything like that. But I think the big thing is is that you definitely want to have a blowout kit of some sort yes. uh, you know, available to you. I keep this one in my truck all the time. Uh, but you know, honestly, a blowout kit is, is good and everything and it's important, but I think a lot of people also need to keep just a good basic first aid kit that's for just everyday stuff as well. That's what I talk to people about is like, you know, we don't have, there's not one gun that fits all needs. Right. I mean, there's some good, but kind of focus, but not one good, not one gun is good for close quarter combat, good for a thousand yard range. I mean, there's not, just not there. Sure. You're more of a gun guy than I am, but you know, I don't, I don't think there's one out there that's good for like close quarters and they can reach out to a thousand yards. I mean, you, you really do need to have like specific tools for a specific job. And I think that that's what this stuff kind of lends itself to is that one specific, oh crap, someone's yep. bleeding out and they're going to die in three minutes if I don't help them. So we have, you know, a first aid kit in our car. That's for certain things. You have a first aid kit in our house. It does something different. One and on the boat. That's yeah, a certain on your way. Boat. Yep. And now we have this for the range and things like that. So they're all designed different. They're all able to handle different, different capabilities. Absolutely. Well, uh, hopefully you guys found this video informative and everything. Make sure you go over and subscribe to Skinny Medic. Also, check out all the products he sells because he's a great dude. He's got a bunch of awesome things out there. I mean, I'm really digging the way that these things, like you've got these little kits here. That is a very smart idea that's very forward thinking. And uh, that's very refreshing to see people kind of thinking along those lines for the everyday person. That That's important because, you know, years ago, um, it, it, you would only really see something like this on the battlefield. You wouldn't have just your average Joe running around with a blowout kit because, oh, who's just going to get shot? Well, it it may not be a gun wound. It could be some other traumatic event that caused somebody chainsaw, to get hurt. chainsaw, things like that. It could be a chainsaw, or it could be a, 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 an unfortunate hunting accident, or yep. a bad fall, or you don't know where, you know, let's face it, uh, every now and then we get a poke in us and we bleed. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you need to be able to stop it. So All uh, bleeding stops eventually. It, it, well, yeah, it stops eventually, <laughs> but the question is how you're going to wind up on the end, <laughs> exactly. alive or dead. So. It's one of those things, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. Uh, you know, I definitely want to thank you for taking the time to come down here and thank make this video me. with us. Absolutely, man. And uh, appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch you next time. We've got a lot more stuff on the way. We're actually going to be doing another couple of videos here with Skinny Medic, so expect some more on the way that's medical related. Uh, I know that it's common for us all to go, oh yeah, we're gun guys and we do all this, and it's all about poking holes in things with guns, but you don't think about what happens after the hole gets poked in something, you know, you got to stop it somehow. So it's definitely food for thought and something that I believe every gun person should have an intimate knowledge of is medical supplies, especially blowout kits. So thanks for watching today's video. We have many more on the way. We'll catch you next time.